you here. I know it's getting late, but never fear. We're gonna cause a stir learning this month's fur. Two. On the mouth, Solomon. Virtue of fun. Three minute edition. Hey everyone out there in video land, thanks for tuning in to the Melv Solomon Virtuathon 3 Minute Edition. Today we've got a humdinger of a virtue, don't we Greg? I like it. Yeah you do. That Greg, so loquacious. Oh I like red loquacious, not black loquacious. No, 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 not licorice Greg. Oh. Loquacious. It means your verbal skills are robust. Mmm, roast beef. Okay. Today we're talking about something amazing that I am sure you've all heard of, Christmas. <laughs> and as I'm sure you know, we often celebrate Christmas with the exchanging of the gifts. <laughs> so today, Greg and I are exchanging gifts from one brother-in-law <laughs> to the other brother-in-law. <laughs> Get on up here, Greg. <laughs> Here's your gift from me to you. Oh, and from me to you. Oh, thank open you. it, open oh, it, open yeah, it, okay. open it, open it. Open oh, ho, it, simmer it, down there, there, Greg. Oh, okay. Don't want you needing your inhaler. <laughs> oh. oh, here we go. Whoa. Is this what I think it is? Yeah. Is this what I think it is, Greg? More, more than likely. Is this what I think it is? Can we find out? My very own bedazzled bow tie! <laughs> <laughs> Greg, how did you know? Oh, uh, you sent me a web link that said buy me this. Oh, yeah, that I did, Greg, <laughs> that I did. Okay, my turn, right. my turn. <gasps> wow! A potato chip. Yeah, I thought it was in the shape of my head. See, now you'll always have something to remember me by and the way I love you, buddy. Plus, if you get hungry, you got a snack. Thank you, Mav. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> but as we know, Christmas is when... But as we know, Christmas is when the ultimate gift was exchanged. The gift of God's Son, Jesus, was given to us. Ain't that right, Greg? The greatest gift ever. That's right, my friend. So, as usual, We'll close out our time here at our Virtuathon with a little ditty from me to you. <laughs> Hit it, Greg. It doesn't matter if you live on land or if you live on an isthmus. God gave a gift to every woman and man. It was Jesus, and that's why we have Christmas. Merry Christmas, everybody. Was that chip tasty? I'm still chewing it. Oh, oh, yeah. I named him. It's Eric Estrada.
Welcome to Story Lab. This week, we're talking about Christmas. While we take a look at the story of an epic plan. Everything okay? This tree is a beast. Ow, it's prickly. I'm Skylar. And I'm Sebastian. We're talking about Christmas, which is celebrating Jesus, God's greatest gift. How do you like to celebrate? Well, my dad gets a little intense with the lights. Intense how? Wow, I'm pretty sure that's visible from space. <laughs> how do you like to celebrate? Let's see, uh, Christmas cookies, candy canes, hot cocoa, candy canes, peppermint milkshake. Oh, uh, did I say candy cane? I'm guessing you like candy canes. It's the sugar rush. And sugar crash. Okay, you're not wrong. How about some candy canes that aren't for eating? What would be the point? We need to decorate our tree, right? True story. Well then, let's make it. Um, what are we making? Crystal candy canes. I'm all in. Step one, cut some red, green, and white pipe cleaners in half and twist up your candy cane base. Step two, use two cups of boiling water for each jar. You'll need a grown up for the next part. Do we get to use this stuff? Yep, the borax will make the crystals. You'll need three tablespoons of borax for each cup of boiling water. So there's two cups in this, so we're gonna do... I don't have enough fingers. Six tablespoons of borax. Now stir it up really well. Um, not all the borax is dissolving. That's good. It means we've got a super saturated solution. Oh, is that why we get our crystal candy canes? Yes. Step three. Now you're gonna hang your candy cane from a half stick using a ribbon. Now, lower it into the glass. It should not touch any of the sides of the glass or the bottom of the glass. Like this? Yep. As the solution cools, more and more borax particles will settle out of the mixture and form crystals. <laughs> um, I, I, I don't see any yet. Step four, wait. Why is there so much waiting during Christmas? Speaking of waiting, it's time for the story before the story. Today, we're in the Old Testament, the book of Isaiah. God had a plan to bless the whole world through one family, the Israelites. But God's people kept turning away from God. It seemed every good king who led the people to follow God's laws was followed by a foolish king who led them to do wrong, terrible things. But God did not leave them alone. Even in this time of trouble, God spoke to the people through prophets who recorded and shared God's words. Two of these prophets were named Isaiah and Micah. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone, I'm Erica. As we've heard, Isaiah lived during a difficult time for God's people. The Assyrians were threatening the northern nation of Israel and the nation of Judah was in danger too. It seemed like there was no hope for God's people. But in the midst of that darkness, God spoke to a prophet named Isaiah. Who will I send? Here I am. Send me. Isaiah spent his whole life sharing God's words during the reign of four different kings. Isaiah's name even means the Lord is salvation. Some of the things that he spoke were warnings and challenges, but often Isaiah shared words of hope. He spoke and wrote about the time when God would send a rescuer to make everything right. A child will be born to us. A son will be given to us. He will rule over us and he will be called Wonderful Advisor, 
and mighty God. He will also be called Father who lives forever and the Prince who brings peace. Through Isaiah, God was promising to send a child who would become a mighty ruler, a king who would be a wonderful advisor, able to help us make wise decisions, also the very best kind of father, one who always loves and protects us. This ruler would also be a prince who brings peace and not just the kind that ends wars, but peace between people, between family members and neighbors, and people from totally different backgrounds. Peace between us and God. Isaiah added this. There will be no limit to how great his authority is. The peace he brings will never end. It will last forever. The Lord's great love will make sure that happens. He rules over all. God's love for us is so great that this amazing king will rule over us forever. It's incredible news, but you can bet God's people were full of questions. How on earth would they know when this king arrives? God gave Isaiah some answers. The Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin is going to have a baby. She will give birth to a son and he will be called Emmanuel. He will still be very young when he can decide between right and wrong. God promised that this king would be born to a young woman and would be named Emmanuel. That means God is with us. God would come to live with us in the form of a person. It was a mind-blowing promise. And God didn't just tell one person about this plan. God spoke to many prophets about it. One of them, a man named Micah, lived around the same time as Isaiah. He came from a small town, but God gave him a message for everyone. Listen to me, all you nations. Micah cared deeply about God's heart for justice, for those who were hurting and overlooked. He also spoke of the one God would send to restore everything. Bethlehem, you might not be an important town in the nation of Judah. Out of you will come from me a ruler over Israel. His family line goes back to the early years of your nation. It goes all the way back to days of long ago. Even in the midst of a dark time, God's rescue plan was underway. God would send a king to be born as a baby in the little town of Bethlehem. That king would be filled with wisdom, would love and protect, and would bring peace between people and God. And even more, that king will reign and live forever. It's a message that brought hope to God's people in Isaiah's time and can bring hope to us today. The end. Wow, I mean, Christmas is epic already, but knowing how God planned every detail, that makes it extra epically epic. Try saying that 10 times fast. Extra epically epic, extra epically epic. Ugh. Okay twice as plenty. So, what's our part in the story? Well, spoiler alert, God fulfilled those prophecies from Isaiah and Micah and about 300 more by sending Jesus. The story of Christmas shows us that God is faithful to keep every promise. So we can have hope even when things seem dark. Exactly. Not only did God promise to send Jesus, but God has promised to one day make everything right in this broken world. That should give us amazing hope, even when we face hard things. Like if you broke your arm and you have to miss three months of basketball. Or you hear your parents arguing a lot. Or you can't travel to see your favorite cousins at Christmas this year. Even when things are tough, you can know that God loves you and will be faithful to make things right again. It's kind of like with Christmas presents. You know you're gonna get to open them, but for right now, you gotta wait. Even if it seems like forever. I think you got it. See you next time. Bye. So here's the thing. You can have hope because God is faithful. Even when you've got to wait. Especially when you have to wait. Oh, hey, are the crystal candy canes ready? Nope. What? They take like a whole day, but I made some last week that are ready. 
These are so cool. Look how the light shines through the borax crystal. What a great solution for our neat fur Christmas decorations. Solution, I see what you did there. Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See you next time. I like this one right here. I'm gonna put it up here.